Okay, I'm going to, I think Tom sounds messy, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, I'm hoping everybody can hear me. Uh, is that the case? Yeah, you're fine. Great. All right, well, welcome to the uh, Telco user group. Uh, my name is Watson, and um, uh, this is the, uh, I guess, the uh, European and China friendly time. So um, for everyone else that might be in other time zones, thank you for joining. Uh, like I was saying earlier, if you have any topics, uh, go ahead and add them to the agenda. I'm gonna go ahead and give a uh, update on the CNF conformance uh, project. There's There was a new release on Friday, uh, 0 0.8.4, which really concentrated on doing platform tests versus um, workload tests. So there's a test in there now for doing node or testing node failure, as well as, um, and it's really testing if the, if the node recover from an unexpected uh, reboot. It also tests to see if the runtime that is that the platform is using is OCI compliant. And um, it, well, another test that's uh, partially under, that's underway is uh, testing to see if cluster API is enabled in order to uh, see if the nodes can be managed uh, automatically. Uh, you can, I put the link inside of the, uh, of the document there, but the release is here and you can download and, and run it. Um, there's also, uh, on the main uh, GitHub uh, URL, there's the uh, installation um, documentation, and so on and so forth. Um, I'll take some time here and see if anybody has uh, anything else that they add as far as updates. I'm going to go, um, while people are thinking about that, I'll go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about some upcoming events. Uh, our next uh, meeting, of course, um, is on October the 5th, and uh, that's going to be at the uh, regular time, 15 UTC. Um, we've got we've got a, um, a couple of other conferences, virtual conferences that we're going to uh, be attending uh, some of this community. Uh, one of note is the Open Networking and Edge Summit. Uh, we have some people uh, within our community presenting there. Um, so we have the, the Birds of the Feather Telco User Group. And we also, and that's on Wednesday, we also have on Wednesday a panel discussion, which is going to be talking about a cloud native within telco as they're applied to telco and also there's there's going to be a, a, a KubeCon November 17th and so be you know, be ready for that so uh, does anyone have any other updates that they would uh, like to share or any questions maybe questions about the performance suite or anything in general silent crowd here. Okay. Well, um, maybe uh, if you all um, what, um, have any uh, comments on what all should be tested as far as platforms or platform tests and workload tests, I'd be great if you could maybe um, send some of that, uh, maybe put it in the chat or go ahead and maybe send it to me directly uh, or Dan, um, because we're, we have a bunch of different tests that we have planned 
um, as far as testing, uh, cloud native networking, um, and performance, and so on and so forth. Um, but what we work on first um, it matters based on the community. So um, we're looking also for contributors. So if there are things that you'd like to work on, and you have feedback. We're really uh, trying to get more information from the community on that. All right. That was actually a question that I have, uh, Watson. So when you say we, who's like, what is the, what's the the group of people, and where do you implement these uh, tests? Rather, is it like in the end-to-end -end test suite, or is it a separate thing, or how does that work? Maybe you can briefly, in one or two sentences, uh, summarize that. Okay. So when I'm talking about the the test in general, I'm talking about the. Uh, this CNF conformance suite. So um, this is a, a suite that goes through and tests uh, um, conformance to say networking cloud native principles really for concentrating on Kubernetes. So making sure that the um, a workload that's installed on Kubernetes, so a CNF, um, if that's playing nice, let's say, on Kubernetes and is portable, it has all of these um, um, capabilities and properties, so compatibility, statelessness, security, make sure that it's a microservice, scalability, uh, configuration of lifecycle tests, observability, installability, and then also test if it's um, on the platform to see if the scheduler has been modified different from what uh, the Kubernetes Ex, um, expects like the Kubernetes um, conformance test and also test resilience. So that's some of what uh, this uh, conformance suite comes or is trying to do, and it comes out of this community. So um, there's a, a bunch of different, um, it's an open source project, and there's a bunch of different contributors to it. Uh, I'm one of the contributors, but the um, as far as what tests the, it's really community driven on what gets prioritized. There's lots of things um, that could be tested, but we really need um, the community to come forward. But there's been a lot of um, interest in platform tests. So there's the the um, Kubernetes conformance test, which this uh, suite is kind of based off of. It gets draws inspiration from. And that actually runs within this suite. So you'll make sure that it's a, whatever platform is running, it's going to be um, conforming to the, um, using the, uh, with respect to the, the Kubernetes conformance, the SANA buoy. Uh, but there are other things that the, uh, people are interested in on, uh, um, in conjunction with that. Uh, so, um, like, I don't think um, the performance suite tests, tests node failure. Um, so the Kubernetes conformance suite. So um, there are the, this test suite is really for the, the concerns of service providers and vendors and trying to make sure everybody's playing nice with each other and trying to be, when we say that it's cloud native, that it's cloud native. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else have um, any questions? Uh, we're also um, trying to uh, work with other projects that um, we consider maybe upstream. So. Um, with um, CNTT and um, the OVP uh, projects from the Linux networking um, group. Uh, we're, we're trying to have the CNF conformance uh, project be a downstream, so being one of the set of uh, tests that get run, so really, um, really focusing on the Kubernetes side and we're gathering also requirements from CNTT 
and um, trying to facilitate some of those things too, if everyone's um, sensitive to, to those requirements. So things like eventually, some, things like multi-tenancy is gonna have to be addressed, security, uh, those types of things. And I see Tom's in, so maybe he can speak a little bit about that if he wants. Um, but uh, there's a big spreadsheet of requirements that are, uh, we're trying to whittle down what are the common ones between all uh, groups involved. Uh, that's another thing. Does anyone else have anything? Let's go back here. Hey, Wilson, sorry, I was, um, I was late. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, on, on, on that work you just mentioned, there was a, I learned in the, uh, in one of the court CNT calls last week, there's a weekly meeting, which I know uh, Oliver and Taylor and Frederick have been setting up. It's It's been running for just a couple of weeks now um, to kind of try and collate those CNF requirements. Um, uh, I will try and find a link to the the, D to the document agenda and I'll put it in the, um, I'll put it in this agenda here so people can see it. Because if you're in, interested in kind of trying to collate those standard requirements around cloud native network functions, then that's probably a good group to work with. I think this one is it. Yeah, that's Pretty the spreadsheet. Um, yeah, there's a there's a there's a Google Docs which has their weekly meeting details in as well. Oh, okay, I find that put that in there. Um, yeah, some of this work is going to be really uh, useful, or all of this is going to be really useful trying to get the communities together. Uh, any? Do you have anything else, Tom? Um, not no, not on this one, no. Okay. And just again, sorry, okay. I'm late. I'm aware it's super early here. Oh, yeah. No problem here. A silent group this time. So <laughs> I think <laughs> that might be it. Might be it. And we've gone over the updates that I had and the events um, that are coming up. So um, I think that might be it. We can give people back their uh, time. We've got uh, someone's writing in as anonymous. <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, well, that might be me. Sorry. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> and so we've got the we got the Google Doc in there for everyone. So I guess we'll give people back uh, thirty minutes of their time. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. Oh, Can I ask go a ahead. question? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, a lot of what's noted here is very, you know, technical in terms of the, you know, conformance of CNF. Um, is there any mm -hmm. like? Uh, concern on the kind of more business side of this so uh, and what, what I mean by business side of this is like if you look at a lot of you know existing telco vendors they would have you know multi-year vendor contracts and then you want to introduce this technology which means they're going to have a multi vendor kind of mix where there'll be some open source components on top of the otherwise you know supported stack um, and you know these uh, telco operators will come across at issues where the um, support would say, oh, sorry, that's, you're using, uh, you know, CNCF stuff. No, we don't support that. That's that's not uh, going to support. But then you find that the development team went through a massive effort to make it work. Um, I mean, how, how do we address that? Uh, how, how do we address the fact that we're going to have a multi-vendor kind of uh, telco stack? Yeah, well, one thing is the conformance suite works with a uh, binary download, so it doesn't necessarily have to be um, open. So the platforms, we're envisioning CNFs that are closed source and um, platforms that are closed source, uh, however that's possible, or pieces of platform that are closed source, they'll be able to be downloaded, installed, and still tested. Um, so it's a good question that you're asking, right? So 
if if you have multi multiple vendors, one of the reasons why you want to have some kind of conformance suite that you can put in your pipeline. So let's say you're a service provider and you have multiple vendors. One of them made a platform and then they have a CNF and you have another vendor who just has a CNF and you in your pipeline. So those stages before you go to production, right? You run, let's say you also have code that you've built. So you build your code. You may or may not have code that you build. You grab the artifacts, right? So these are the binaries. You take those. You also take the artifacts from, let's say, CNF vendor one that has a, the their platform and their CNF. And then you have CNF vendor two. Take their artifacts of so their CNF, right? You're putting them all together. That's going to be built on in that second phase of your pipeline. That, and then this third phase, so you have a working environment or supposedly working. Now you're going to be applying integration tests and other stages. The CNF conformance, that's where you would run that. And so if some other a vendor comes in and says, well, we don't support the CNF stuff, that's uh, CNCF stuff, that's what you said, it really comes down to you and you saying, well, we're interested in these tests if they fail or if they don't fail um so they could say that they don't support but it could be maybe it doesn't violate the contract maybe it violates their contract with you um however you if you were to say you didn't have any type of conformance testing at all it seems to me that you would still be going out there manually seeing if everything worked on a new version of a of a artifact delivered to you. And this just automates that, right? Or if you have a, you know, in, this is one scenario, injecting it into your pipeline. It's also envisioned that the vendors run it themselves against their own. It's the same way how the Kubernetes conformance works. Uh, individual, uh, so the way um, I said CNF conformance, but Kubernetes conformance works. How Kubernetes conformance works is the individual cloud providers, if they have a Kubernetes offering, they run the conformance suite against their own offering, and then they'll post it up, the results, they'll post it up to, like, it's a, a GitHub repository. But anyone else can run the uh, Kubernetes uh, conformance suite. Uh, it's not really that hard to install, but anyone else can run it against an, a Kubernetes offering and then say, hey, this is the results we got. So it's not like only one person can run it. So it keeps everyone honest. I guess everyone can see every, what everyone else is doing. That's where it kind of, um, it's, it's good if everyone runs a type of conformance against their own platform or CNF or their own artifacts in general, but you also can run, and I would, would recommend you'd run some type of tests against um, your, uh, whenever you get any type of deliverable, right? So uh, I don't know if, does that, does, am I getting at the heart of your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 that's kind of answering it. I'm just thinking that this information should feed into some sort of dashboard or some sort of you know, uh, requirements Definitely. matrix or, or, or shared responsibility matrix where, you know, give, like, give an example, for example, like, you know, see Amazon's on the call here, but let's say they ha you have uh, outposts with um, certain things in a region and you run this conformant test. The conformant test can tell you that, well, there's nothing wrong with the virtualization layer uh, or the Kubernetes layer, but then, you know, your application is still fa uh, failing above the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, th th there needs to be some output that's basically before you submit a let's say a support request that says that you know the, the, these these partners are not they're conformed there's the issue is not there um so that it's not about a um from a support's perspective they're not uh just you know trying to push the i don't want to say blame blame sounds too negative but it's like you know, it says, oh, you're outside outside of the uh, conformed stack, per se. It's that, okay, let's work on the problem here. We know it is. We've listed down to, you know, these three, four components, uh, which probably includes, you know, this vendors, which is outside the CNCF. 
kind of conformity test. But again, it's you need to give this reassurance, this reassurance to to management that uh, um, you know that it that 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 it's there's a shared responsibility matrix there. It's agreed on, and the conformant tests kind of shows how it ticks the boxes of that and uh, and doesn't allow the classic support from some vendor underneath to um, you know to to push the problem somewhere else. Could be part yep. of that investigation. I Definitely. Uh, yeah, a dashboard would really be nice. And, you know, if, if there's people that want that, we could definitely try to put something like that, that together. But right now, the underlying artifact that it is a CLI, so it gives you, um, you know, gives you, uh, you know, red if something fails, green if it passed for every one of the tests and has a name so you can actually see it. But rolling that kind of thing up to a dashboard for all of the rest of your um, tests that you probably should have for your environment. Yes, that's something I think, I personally think that's important. And yeah, it is, you know, we try not to say it's a blame game. Uh, in, you know, it really shouldn't. We really should be trying to, it's really a handshake. Someone gives you an artifact and you're running and you want to put that in your environment, you have some things that are a little bit different, you, as, as the quicker that you can give them back information, info, as, hey, this doesn't work, your new security patch, it's great on your test, but we're your main consumer and you're breaking us. So can you please give us another patch that doesn't kill us pretty quickly? Um, that the faster instead of that happening in emails and things like that, but it happening almost real time where people can get the information, like if it was a dashboard or some type of automated feedback on failure, that that makes it to where your whole pipeline is faster. So yes, I really it really is a type of handshake between upstream and downstream projects. Um, does anyone else have any questions or comments on that? Yeah, so we're really interested in these types of, uh, this type of pain. So any feedback on how people are actually consuming their uh, the artifacts, their products and everything from their vendors and how they do, how they give back their information, how long those cycles are taken and when we, how we can help tune that with the conformance would be great. Um, so if there's nothing else, uh, unless somebody wants to have some other questions, we'll give back uh, 30 minutes of your time. And uh, thanks for joining. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Wilson. All right. Take it easy.